Okay, welcome to the desaturation demonstration. So this is going to be using our primary and secondaries. And I went ahead and already pre-selected and measured off my tape. You wanna have approximately one by one inch boxes. So when you think about the column, the row going down, you're going to have your primary and secondary. So let's say red, yellow, blue, and then orange, violet, and green. And then you're having five across. So the first row is going to be the original hue. And then from there, you're just going to add more grays until you dull it down. So desaturation, where we're not allowing the value to be as bright and vibrant. We are moving it down to saturation, um, desaturation. Okay, so again, we'll have five different rows that will show this. I went ahead and already started using my primary colors and then I have my black and white. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a large mixture of black and white, a gray. It really helps using more of a darker gray. So let's say like a charcoal gray for this because it breaks the colors down a little faster. If you decide to go with a light gray for this one, it will um, be a little bit more muted, which is fine. This will just go a little bit quicker and seeing the value desaturate. Again, I'm trying to get a darker gray. I know we're used to using our different gray tones from our value scale that we just completed. And again, I'm trying to get a little bit larger amount. I can always continue on, but this is good too to again do this in one sitting. It will not take as long as the color will. It's a little bit faster in process. And again, it's really measuring the idea with the eyeball of being able to see the different values that accumulate. Okay. Again, a flat brush is great to use because we are using these little square boxes, so that kind of helps with just getting the values down quickly. I taped off my area, but you do not need to do that. I went ahead and had a two inch on the top so I can write desaturation. And then I have a one inch um, between each one. So for example, here's my one inch box and then one inch blank spot, one inch box, one inch blank spot, and vice versa with the other side as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with red. And all I do is put down the original hue. So the original color, I'm not gonna use any white, excuse me, any water. I'm gonna stay away from water. And now I already have my red that you can see that's on my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and get some gray and just mix a little bit of a palette separate. So I'm adding some gray tones into this. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and just make sure that I see it different. If it looks too similar to the original hue, that means that I'm gonna add a little bit more gray because you wanna see it step down. We're only going to be doing this in five short boxes. So it does happen quickly. This is kind of similar to our value scale that we created. This is now just using color and just grays. Okay, next, I already have my little palette that I started here, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more gray. Again, you don't need much at all. This is a very fast process. And the main thing is you just wanna see from your eye, is the color changing? Is it being saturated down? And if it's not, you just go back and add more. And as you know too, with acrylic, it does dry a little bit darker than when it is wet. So you're welcome to wait for it to dry a little bit and then you can always see how it looks after that. I'm gonna continue with my small palette here and just add a little bit more colors of gray. And notice again, I have this large amount of gray that I'm using, so I'm just pulling from there. I'm not adding any separate black and white. I found that it's faster to create a large palette of gray. It allows you to go quickly through this exercise. And you do not need tape again. I just utilize tape just because it's a little bit faster for me um, if you do have it at home. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more gray. Now the key is when you get to your very last one, you want to still see the original color. You don't want to be completely dulled down where all you see is gray. That means that you lost the color. But you want it to be different than all the others. And we want to see the sense of a, a sense of gradation of how values have changed. Adding a little bit more gray into here. Okay, and as I let that dry, I'm going to see how it looks. But so far, again, I want to see my original hue to my darkest dark. Red is a little translucent, the one that I have. I have a cadmium medium. 
So I may go back and add another layer of red just to really bring in, make it pop from the original. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush. Remember again, you don't wanna leave your brush inside of your cup or your jar because it can make the bristles at an angle, it can dent them. So you wanna just clean it off and then let it rest out on the side. Okay, and you know, since I'm already here, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more red again. We're staying away from water, so again, we're just keeping that nice, rich, original color that we have. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and work with yellow. Yellow, again, is a challenging medium because it's so translucent. It's a really beautiful color, but when we work with grays, we can lose the color so rapidly. Okay, so I have a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna add just a little bit of small amount of gray because a lot of gray can go very far with yellow. And I already got a lot of gray here, so I'm gonna make another little palette in this little corner just because I already created a lot of grays there. And I'm even gonna create another palette here. Okay. So the idea again is you don't want it to dull down too quickly but you do want it to look different than the original. When you paint too, it's good to be consistent, either go horizontal, diagonal, vertical, but not to go all over the place as you build value. This one also, this color is um, very light in its value. So you may wanna do two layers if you'd like to. Again, we're not using water. So that helps with just creating a sense of, um, it won't hopefully bleed underneath the tape. Grab a little bit more gray. Right now, these look a little similar, so I'm gonna go even darker. But again, I don't wanna lose the color, the original color. Okay, it's starting to get darker. I don't know if the camera's picking that up very easily. And again, because you have everything already mixed, you're welcome to go back and just add more values if necessary. Or again, wait till it dries. You're using such a small little area that it um, is okay if you were to go back and having to mix more. Oops, I got some gray in that one. Um, if you notice I got some gray here, what you can do, this is just a little quick idea. If you have a paper towel, and then if you have some water nearby, or again, like a cotton or something, I'm just gonna pull it out. So right now it took off the paint, but it also took off the colors I needed. Kind of like erasing it. It works well again if everything is still wet. If it's dry, it's, um, it's difficult to take off. If anything, you just add white over the whole area to kind of white it out, so to speak, and that will give the color back. Okay, meaning that you would just put paint over it again. Okay, so here's our colors. Again, the cool thing is we can go back as they dry, no problem. We have a lot of palette paper, palette paint that we can work from. Next is blue. Now blue is already a dark color, so when I add gray into it, it's going to dull um, pretty quickly in terms of how it gets darker. So I'm making another little palette on the side, and again, I use foam plates. You can use whatever you, you want or whatever you have nearby for a palette. Okay, and it's starting to change a little bit, but it's not too dramatic. It is starting to dull down slightly. So again, you could add more gray if you want to. This exercise, again, is very relaxing. You're mixing color and you're just making these little swatches. 
Okay, so again, I'm working with this corner here, adding more. Add a little more gray. If the medium, the paint bleeds underneath your tape, if you're using tape, what you can always do is when you do remove the tape, you can just add white paint around the edges to clean up the area again. So it just has, again, a clean presentation. Okay, and we're gonna use our last gray. So the goal is, again, when you get to the gray portion, you still wanna see the original hue. You just wanna see it dulled down. So you're seeing a lot more gray inside of that. We're gonna add a little bit more. Okay. Cleaning my brush again. Add more blue to the original hue, just to saturate that. All right, and as that dries, again, I can go back and see how things are going, and I can always fix or adjust.